everyone, and welcome to another segment of our Business of Medicine e-learning series. I'm Susie Laux, Communications Coordinator for Harris County Medical Society, and with us today, Dr. John Bertini, Gulf Coast Urology, Dr. Dexter Turnquest, Immediate Past President for HCMS, and Dr. Mina Sinicori, our current HCMS President. Welcome, everyone. Now, the goal of this series is to provide our viewers with a high-level view of how to start and run their practice. Now we've covered topics such as selecting your practice location, how to develop your business plan, and how to finance your practice. In addition, we've also discussed patient flow and provided some tips on how to work the administrative aspects of your practice. You know, with that being said, Dr. Sinicori, Turnquest, and Bertini, you're physicians who have built your practice from the ground up. Now, could you provide our audience with insight of what you wish you knew when you first started your practice and maybe some of your life lessons learned? Let's start with Dr. Sinicori. Thank you, Susie. So I think it's real important to be flexible, flexible, flexible in your protocols, flexible in your staffing arrangements. So for example, if you have two medical assistants and one front desk, that they all kind of help each other and, and multitask. Maybe if your check-in lady is sick, the front desk um, needs extra help. The medical assistants can help with scheduling, um, with answering the phones. And when the doctor's out of the office, use that downtime productively. Also be flexible in your purchasing. Don't just use one supplier, shop around and get the best pricing on each item. And I also would recommend that starting a new practice, you take time for yourself. Starting a new practice is very stressful. And remember to breathe, remember to enjoy life and enjoy medicine. Dr. Senecori, that is great information. Let's hear from Dr. Bertini. Thank you. Get a mentor, get mentors. Those that have gone before you that are in practice that can advise you. More than likely, they're going to really be honored and they're going to do that. They're going to give you the benefit of their successes and mistakes. The other thing is join the Harris County Medical Society, join the Texas Medical Association. They're focused on helping physicians in private practice be successful and are protecting our model of business. That is great information too, Dr. Bertini. Well, let's go on to our another expert, Dr. Turnquest. Thank you, Susie. I think probably the most important thing that uh, in hindsight that I wish I'd taken more advantage of or at least sought, sought out is what Dr. Bertini uh, talked about, and that is having a good mentor. Not from the medical side, we pretty much have that covered. It's the business side that gets us in trouble. Um, there is just so much to learn uh, that we were not exposed to in our training. Very well accomplished as we are, there's another language, the language of business, that we're woefully inept at. Um, fortunately, at this point, there are lots of resources that we can, we can on our own, um, uh, take advantage of. Um, LinkedIn, or you might find your, your favorite guru uh, on the blogs uh, that we can pick up on a lot of this. But we really do need to take advantage of it because medicine is moving, um, the business of medicine is moving in such a way that it's, it's really leaving us behind. So, Starting today, one of the big things I would tell a young physician, particularly as you're starting your practice and things are a little bit slow, take the time to invest in yourself. Uh, make yourself a better leader, a better understanding of what's going on around you. Why are people um, doing the things or leaning the way that they are? The other thing to take advantage of um, is that really it's hard to maintain a practice by yourself. And, and what I mean by that is it, there's a community and that community may involve other physicians that you may tap into and share resources, but there are also hospital systems or other um, uh, ventures that you should take advantage of and really look out for. Um, there might be um, drug companies that might want to help you out here and there, or uh, supply companies that'll help you out, um, but be open to that and take advantage of it. Um, all those folks that are, are surrounding us are resources. And, and while some of them are, you know, they have their needs, you have your needs, and, and make those things line up is really beneficial to us. But be open to looking at things outside of medicine. Um, and probably the most important thing, as Dr. Sinicori says, enjoy your practice. If you find yourself being overwhelmed by it, something's not being done right, you need to take Friday off, take some time, 
and figure out what it is. Uh, there was a plastic surgeon that I was uh, friends with, and what he said was in his first year in practice, what he did, took every Friday off and reevaluated the week and then figured out what he was going to do next week to make this better. So I encourage you to take a deep breath, invest in yourself, understand that medicine is a business, um, and, and it can be rewarding, it can be challenging, but it can be ultimately very rewarding. This has been such great information, you guys. Now, let me ask, anybody else have anything else to add? I know maybe Dr. Turnquest does, possibly. Well, I just wanted to add that it's important that, that you pay attention to the people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. um, your accountant may be, may be uh, well-intentioned, but it's not familiar with a physician's practice and how, how we have to account for things. Your, your attorney, you know, if you don't have a healthcare attorney, can be well-intentioned, but things are not the same in healthcare as it is in, in other businesses. Um, I've had certainly other friends of mine who were business people who gave me advice, but what they didn't understand is we live by different rules. It's mm -hmm. a different thing. And so just want to make sure that you vet the people that you're trusting with your livelihood. Uh, same thing comes with your employees, etc. It Take the time and get to know who your employees are, particularly when you're starting out. The first person that comes along is your business manager, who's the most important person in your practice. Be sure that you have vetted that person, and not just because you like them. Right. <laughs> How about you, Dr. Sinecori? I think also listen to feedback, feedback from your patients. You know, maybe consider having a, a survey, an exit survey, just to, to see you know, what, what they like and, and don't like about your practice and, and learn. And remember, they're the ultimate consumer and it's important about providing quality care and also satisfaction. Dr. Bertini. Well, I would think that it's very important to periodically invest in your self-confidence. You've achieved so much already, having completed a medical education and begun a medical career. You're going to do fine running a small business that is your office. Don't let small mistakes and small problems and small failures erode your self-confidence. Every once in a while, stop and look at what you've accomplished. You'll do fine. Thank you so much for your insight. Now, as we wrap up, I'd like to thank all of you for your time. And we also like to thank all the physicians who have participated in this e-learning series. Thank you again.